Okay, humans. Fire weapons. All right. So there are four lectures left. I'm going to go through a couple of them. Um, pieces to finish this up and you know so obviously none of this is anything you'll do assignments on or anything but hopefully it's interesting it ties a bunch of stuff together it's built on a lot of work over many years by um well some some by the groups i've been part of but you know of course many people so first part is going to be social contagion we started on it the other day uh then we're going to talk about um voting right so this is like how do we how do we you know, we've talked a lot about ranking, right? How do we get rankings for things? Uh, and and so we might play around with that a little bit. I'm going to talk about stories in a very general way. So about contagious stories. And then I'll have this finishing part about complexification, right? So why why complexify? Which is a sort of a, a big question, right? So, you know, there's why is there anything? Bit of a tough one. Then why is there life, right? So also another one. Um, right now, if you haven't seen the story, but there's a PNAS article by the Bungards team and the group of Tufts where they've managed to get uh, their little, I call them tofu bots, but these little bits of marshmallow to uh, kind of make new versions of themselves. So reproduction of sort of animate objects, but there's no brain, there's no nothing like that. All right. So life right so that's another weird kind of view into like what life might be all right so um i'm gonna sort of this is gonna be a big part of an imitation right it's just a very fundamental part of how people behave you know you think of the accent that you have growing up uh, it's not your parents if maybe they have different accents it's, it's you and this took a long time really i think weirdly for academics to embrace um maybe 20 years ago there was a uh uh, a, a book that came out, a woman who'd written a lot of textbooks. I need, I need to look this up because it's just coming in my head. A lot of textbooks for sociology for many, many years, but just sort of put this framing as like people copy each other. And it really wasn't, um, sounds ridiculous to say, it, it just wasn't as full of, uh, you know, uh, in, in the thinking of a lot of fields. Um, so, you know, and if you think about all the success of uh, Kahneman and Tversky and all of that kind of behavioral economics, you know, more, more recently, the last 10, 15, 20 years, there's been models involving copying, but a lot of it's about the individual, how the individual behaves, maybe in context of many. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Okay, so social contagion goes on forever. This is a very benign one, but uh, when I, in New York City, maybe 2002 or three, Puma spread through the world, which, you know, like it had been sort of an abandoned product, but uh, a brand, shall we say, and... Um, these, these are Duncan Watts's feet. Um, and the, I spied them on him and I'm like, oh my God, you've, you know, cause this is what we worked on, right? Like, look at you, you've copied. But he said uh, a friend of his had forced him to buy them. So, you know, our, our thought at the end of that was, that was the end of the, 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 we're getting towards the end of the spreading of this thing because it's getting the, the most resistant um, susceptibles were, were being infected. So, um, all right, so I told two. I told oh yeah, this two is. Friends. Let me just show you this. So we've had SIR models in contagion, right? So this is sort of the old school model. That's what we talked about in disease spreading. And if you kind of add some movement to it, you get the sort of horrific story that it's very unpredictable. SIRS means you can become infected again, and you know for for COVID, that's true, right? So how does that work for? Social contagion, well, you could put it in there, right? I mean, you might not go back to exactly the same thing, but, you know, maybe you like watching horror movies and then it goes away. You know, these are sort of benign things. Dieting can be, of course, quite serious in the extreme. Um, you know, you, you could sort of fall out of doing these things. You know, maybe you try to spread democracy for a while and then you kind of leave off and then you kind of go back to it. So, you know, there are, that it can, you can have cycling through behaviors, of course. All right. This is just a ridiculous... But if you look at a lot of ads, a lot of ads are trying to tell you to spread things or that people like you are doing something, right? And this is an old ad. I told two friends about Fabergé organic shampoo with pure wheat drum oil and honey, and they told two friends and so on. This is a real ad. A long time ago. You can tell by the quality. They're not all the same. So be sure it's Fabergé. 
for super body, super Not all the same, super right? We're all special and all different. Get the one and only Fabergé right. organic shampoo. You'll tell two friends, and they'll tell two friends. Now you got it. And so on, and so on, and so on. <laughs> Fabergé <laughs> shampoo and conditioner with pure Awful. Pure oil and honey. Right, so... I told two... I don't know why it's not working. When you invite your friends to Hulu Plus, oh, this is Hulu, you can earn right? up to one year free. You know, classic thing. Here's invite how it works. You, know, you invite your friends to sign up. Like, we'll give when you they do, like you will get two weeks free. Socks. The more people just, you, you know, invite, just the more free friends. Hulu Plus you get. So start inviting your friends today. They're all happy. They're all green for some reason, which, which suggests infection. Um, anyway, so uh, lots of... So there's been theoretical models, and then we'll go through those because they tell stories about systems that we don't intuit, and they're very important in that sense, right? So, uh, but re there's only been, um, there's much older work, and I'll point to it, uh, Lazarsfeld and um, Katz and Lazarsfeld, say, for example, from the 50s, you know, where they would go to, they went to a town, I think, in this case, and interviewed everyone about why they did things. Like, why did you buy this product? Why did you? Uh, it was during, I think, the Second World War, so they were sort of they focused on women, and they wanted to know why they went to see a movie. Why they, you know, like all these things. Who was the person who influenced you? And this remains a problem that no one can really get their handle around. Um, you know, who is who's an influential? Now, of course, we live in a time where we talk about influ influences on. Instagram or whatever, and, and there's a sense that, um, you know, we just know who they are and we can just pay them money and so on. Um, and that sort of works. It's scaled basically by the number of followers you have, right? That's sort of kind of it. Um, but we'll, we'll sort of attack that idea of influentials. Uh, anyway, so so this what I'm saying there is there are old studies, but there's only been sort of in the last 10 or 15 years, big scale starting to get big scale studies. Of course, the studies are going on, you know, by Facebook and, you know, all these companies that are trying to kind of present you with different things and connect you in different ways. Because now they, you know, now you have the ability to present a different shop front to, you know, a million people or to present a different timeline to, you know, a million people. And that's a something we'll come back to. But this is, this was this huge, this is a huge thing at the time. Um, and I'm going to say straight away that it's a disaster, right? So this is the spreading of a number of things. One was quitting smoking in a, in a social network. The spread of spreading is, a, it's my joke, but this is about obesity, right? So this is a spreading of obesity. And the finding was, it was that, that if you have friends who become larger, right, they gain weight, then, you know, you have this chance of becoming larger, like a non-random non sort of chance of getting larger yourself. It wasn't your family wasn't your neighbors. The idea was it was your friends, right? So the, the upshot of that, and you saw some articles saying, well, I guess you should cut off contact with you. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty awful. But here's, here's a fantastic disastrous network problem. It's from the Framingham Happiness, Loneliness. There was a book, you know what I mean? Whatever. I'm not, I mean, I think it's just a genuine disaster. You know, it happens in science. Um, and so lots of, right, so are your friends making you fat? This is the New York Times. Everything is contagious because it turned out that using the same uh, analysis, you could show that height is contagious amongst teenagers, right? Um, uh, you know, various other kinds of things like that. So uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a good analysis. But here, here's the really the fundamental problem. So where did they get this data from, right? They didn't, you know, how do you collect this data? This, Facebook's just starting, taking off, so it's not quite there. Um, but this is from a much older, very well um, intentioned uh, study about heart disease, which is the Framingham Heart Study. So, which outside of Boston, right? So, the, the, the idea was to like, well, we'll just measure everything about these people in this big study, and we'll get their friends and family, and we'll look at their kids. This is going to go on for generations, and we're going to. It's about heart, right? So, heart disease, which you know is a giant, giant issue. We'll just see, you know, the try to figure out if this is a genetic stuff, what, it, what can we sort out from this? So in that study, there was a basic little question, which was a retention thing. So a very standard kind of thing. And, you know, if we lose contact with you, who's someone we could reach out to who might be able to, you know, find you, right? So you could, and this is what I understand. So you, there's a little sort of list, and I, I, don't, I think it was sort of free form, but that was the only thing in all of this that became then a, a way of getting a proxy for the social network. 
because the people you listed presumably were, and of course they had your family, so there's a, the family network. But this gave people, gave you know, people later on, you know, the idea was just to make it so you could retain people, but it was a way of maybe gleaning a social network out of it as well. Now you, the people had to be in the study as well, and they had to be, um, well, you know, you're not listing all your friends, right? There are hundreds, thousands of people you know potentially who you could list. So it's not that, it's only a few. So you've got this big social network and you're cutting out most of the links, right? So you're cutting out most of the links and then trying to infer something about what happens three steps away. And there were claims like, if someone gets a raise three steps away from you in the network, your happiness can go up 10% or something, right? It's just sort of what these, this is kind of the language. I mean, you know, there was a, one of these guys was on Colbert saying that it's sort of the first thing they'd led with, right? It was a big, I mean, and people are like, this is a good story, right? This is pretty exciting. Of course, there's the negative and the positive version of this. Um, as I say, though, it's like the, the network they were working with was incredibly limited. So if you cut out all of the ties and then try to say something about someone who's three steps away from you, they could really be someone you're connected with directly, right? It's just that you didn't list them in this tiny list of, of connections. So this is this is a problem that people have dealt with somewhat. I think it's gotten a little bit better, but just missing data in networks, horrible problem. Just a horrible, horrible problem. And a lot of the kind of studies that have you know, been fine or whatever, they show something. The, the reality is that there's some sort of subset of the real network and that subsampling, pretty bad. Okay, so, um, so in turn, so that, you know, these are big studies, but they sort of felt, you know, they've run into disastrous headwinds. Um, they were kind of ill-formed. But as I say, these companies have been, um, you know, these large scale social media companies have been looking at who's connected to whom and thinking, you know, or at least getting machines to think deeply about it. Think. <clears throat> anyway, so we're going to go from these two, these two uh, different points of view. So there's sort of, and of course, there's many things in, connected in between, but Basically, the idea of widespread media, and this goes back to the advent of the telegraph is the start of when we have this sort of information at a massive distance being communicated, like bang, you know, that's a, it's still, you know, limited from the source and the, and the destination, they're kind of pretty focused. But then radio changes that, right? So you think now radio is like there's a focus source and now there's just, it's just, just, you know, washing over people and that. Um, you know, that, that was a big change. And of course, now we have the sort of many to many world we live in. Right. So just, a, just an incredibly hard problem who, you know, and there are books and people tell you they can do this and we'll find the influentials and we'll do this for you and give us, you know, billions of dollars. Um, what kinds of influence response functions are there? Right. So this is to say, if, you know, three of your friends do this and two of them do this other thing and another one does this and your family does, you know, what, how does that kind of add up in your mind? Can we even think about it like that? Um, you know, how, what, what's the response function? There, there are the um, Ash experiments from a long, Solomon Ash is from the 50s, I think. You know about these ones. This is the, um, something like this. You're given your A, B, and C. You're an experiment. There's a projector, presumably, and over here is a line. And you have to say which line is, which is it A, B, or C? It's just the length, right? You just want to match in length. And the, the thing is that these were long enough to make it really clear, right? So anyone doing it by themselves, it was really clear. And the game was set up like this. You'd have a bunch of people, 10 or so around a table. And you'd ask, you just repeat this kind of question, different frameworks. And you'd ask them like, what, which one do you think? This one says A and you go around. And they, you know, the next round they'd start at someone else and they'd go around or ask in different orders. And now and then you would, you would, the, it turns out there's just, this is the one person who's the experiment. Everyone else is a plant, right? Because, you know, psychologists, yeah. So this is about peer pressure. What, every now and then they would get one wrong. This person here next to you would say the wrong one. You'd go around here and you'd be the last one. And it's clearly wrong, right? It's like anyone would, would have gotten this by themselves. And that, and there's some large percentage of people would, would agree with everyone else. It's sort of been figured out perhaps later that it's a mixture of responses. One is just like people doubt themselves. Like they start to really actually think like I can't see properly, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't know how things, you know, 
they get confused. And some of us like, this is weird. I'm going to say what everyone else says because people are terrifying in groups, right? And, you know, that, that's fair enough. But if you just, if you did the same experiment, but this person says the right question, right answer here, everyone else says A, which is wrong, ob like obviously wrong. One other person saying the right answer, it's fine. So this was right up at the limit of something that was clearly by yourself, you'd be fine. But if you add a ton of peer pressure, you can force people to behave in a certain way. And if you move away from that into more sort of, you know, messier things, you know, what's the, what's your response function like then? Do you just need, you know, if you, if you're really unsure about it, what happens if, you know, three people say it and four, you know, what, what happens in those kind of cases? All right. So Gladwell, you know, has made a whole world out of this and kind of become confused as a scientist. He's sort of treated in that way, but we'll now say he's just a storyteller. Uh, it's just a mess. I mean, you know, like this is the airport stuff and it, big companies make decisions based on the latest Gladwell book about whatever. Um, it's, it is, it's really problematic. And then Steven Pinker will say he's an idiot. And then everyone will say Steven Pinker's an idiot. It's kind of, you know, our, our sort of public intellectuals, I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. There's a New York Times article from years ago with, uh, it's Pinker just saying that, I don't know why he needed to do this, but he's just like, Gladwell is some sort of minor genius <laughs> and and then ridicules him for saying getting eigen like eigenvalues. He'd written in this like I G O N. He'd mis misheard the person and just sort of written down this name. It's just anyway, all right? Okay. <clears throat> um, cats and lies fell. So I, I talk about this. This is sort of where opinion leaders. This idea of opinion leaders comes from and influentials comes from, and that's an idea we like. Right? We like that. We it sounds pretty good if we can find the one person who will tell everyone else what to do. This is what I was talking about with um, television and uh, it's radio and then television. This is um, it's actually a figure I made in XVIG like a long time ago, and it's been copied. I've seen it in presentations by a number of you know people who it's kind of fun. Um, there's no attribution anymore, which is fine. That's that's good. Um, anyway, it took a long time to make that tiny TV. Uh, XVIG is just a, just a horrific thing from the. 1980s probably. So anyway, anyway, it was called the hypodermic model, right? You know, this is a pretty straightforward bit of like, you're just getting an injection, which I guess where some, that, that framing would be really terrifying for some portion of the population now. But the idea was, yeah, you are just like, here's the stories and it's just going into people and they're going to behave in a certain way, right? And it leaves aside anything about how people interact with each other. Katz and Lazarsfeld, and if you go back to their work, they're like, well, look, it's obviously not quite that. It's something more complicated. And just to have a model that's a little more sophisticated, but not the reality of it, let's think about it like this. So they had this idea of opinion leaders or influentials who are also bathed in the media, and that they influence people around them as well. And, if, and as, as I said, they, they said this wasn't reality, but it was something that was a little further away, and they could kind of uh, a little closer to it, and they could mess with it. And it's much more like this, right? So there's some media that's bathing, you know, people. And of course, this is really diverse. This is not its own. Over time, this is fractured more and more and more. Uh, but people are influencing each other. And of course, this is about a given topic, right? So you might listen to, you know, this friend about computers or this friend about movies or this friend. Or you might not want to ever listen to them about movies. You know, like you have your barriers, like never talk to them about Marvel and DC. You know, like, or whatever it is, or Lord of the Rings, never bring it up. You know, but, you know, cooking desserts, you know, this is your go-to human, right? So it's sort of, it's not a, it's not just one network that's fixed. You've got this big social network you have, on, and then different links will light up depending on what you're trying to, what, what you're interested in. Okay. Um, so why do things spread socially, right? So, you know, is it big? You know, this very basic thing. Um, is it because of, you know, special individuals or is it system level properties? And, you know, of course, we, we because of our storytelling, I think the problem is that we think this, right? So we, we get confused. It's pretty obvious when it comes to a forest fire that whatever lit the fire isn't really important. But that's what we do over and over again with social phenomena. Um, you know, it's good to know where something started. I mean, the, of course, the, the origin of COVID is something that's been a, a festival for the uh, a festival of conspiracy theories. 
um, it's a, it is important to know, you know, where these things, where those things might come from. Like maybe we shouldn't eat um, pangolins, right? You know, just don't eat the pangolins. Anyway, so, uh, but, you know, we can get, that could be misleading as well. So, um, yeah, right. It's a storytelling problem, right? So we think things happen um, for, you know, we want to, we want to impute um, cause out, you know, we want to, if there's causality, we want to make that, um, we want to get it right. So we, we tend to, we, we tend to look for reasons, um, but we are a little, and I, as I'll sort of show you in the next couple of lectures, like we tend to go for the intrinsic properties, right? That's the, and one I'll bring up again, is like Mona Lisa, right? So has anyone actually seen it? Has anyone seen the Mona Lisa? What'd you think? Like a lot smaller. Yeah. yeah. And there's usually a lot of humans around as well. Yeah. That doesn't help that part. But if you sort of take them away, then, you know, it is it's a little disappointing. You know, it's like, how, you know, like, is this real? Anyway, we'll talk about that. So, total social construction story there, right? I mean, it's not just a smear of paint, but, um, but that works too, right? So, <laughs> anyway, so we'll get, we'll get to fame. Fame means to be talked about. Um, it's just easier to understand, right? It's easier to believe that that intrinsically, like that is a great painting. Like it actually, the eyes follow you around the room. There are intrinsic qualities, you know, that, that make it, that you as a human with no other knowledge of anything would just be transfixed by. Right. Well, it took about 400 years for the Mona Lisa to be thought of as pretty good actually. So what, what's that about, right? That, that's pretty weird. Um, anyway, so it's much harder to understand. It's something to take away over and over again from this. We just very hard to understand group dynamics. So you kind of have to just have that in your head all the time. We build our stories around individuals. They're just much better, easier stories to understand. We can be in them. We can make sense. We can kind of comprehend them. These are just much harder stories. And it's not just, of course, about people. You know, group dynamics is also like, you know, fluid dynamics, right? I mean, these, these, that's a big group story. And these things, Bongard has made that, you know, are going to obviously kill us all at some point, but, you know, in a cute, and delicious way. Um, anyway, so this is, this is a, you know, a sort of a thing I'll say here. Anyway, yeah, what happens before and after the fact? Did you ever? Yeah, I'm wondering if it's worth saying that. Um, is this officially true for Western civilization and the weird brain? I mean, yeah, yeah. Any traditional society, stories are not about individuals, right? But I know it's not the point of the... No, no, I mean, it's a bit, obviously it varies across cultures, but even then you're still, I mean, say like the boy who cried wolf is a good one, right? That's a good one that ties a group behavior to I'm an individual. I'm thinking about like art, I mean, like 500 years ago, yeah, you'd be possessed by some extrinsic force, and it's not really about individuals, it's more like the embodiment of something greater, right? So something more like, um, it wasn't always about individuals. What are the gods though? The gods aren't fluffy ethereal beings. They're like dudes with beards. You know, like I I mean No, it's true. It's true. It's true. But a lot of gods are individuals of some, or animals or something. You know, they're 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 physical things. Yeah. I mean they're they're yeah. sort of contained objects. Again, yeah, especially in our in our society. I mean, I know that it's a long... Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, it's a, we, this would be fantastic. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is a tricky one. Like, that's a tricky one. It's sort of just a bit everywhere. And it's like, yeah. What's what's the thing in Star Wars? The Chlamydians or whatever? Yeah, the midichlorians. Midichlorians? I'm laughing at Star Wars, just to be clear. Um, I don't even know what's, what, what's, what's going on with it. Okay. All right. So, here's Mona Lisa. Here it is, right? So, this this is the... the um, uh, uh, you know, you don't need to read this, but this is a, a well-done book where it basically traces its history of, you know, for five or 500 years. Um, and it took, you know, as I said, it wasn't like instantly, you know, people like fell on their knees and wept or something. That This is like, this just is great. Um, so there was, you know, theft, vandalism. I'll probably repeat this because uh, I have it in other little packages, this parody. Um, this is, that's from 1999. Uh, yeah. Terrible, terrible behavior. She's great on Twitter, by the way, I should say. Um, 
good for her. All right, so the parity just keeps going. You can't help yourself. You know, like it gets deeper and deeper. But once you've got to parity, usually, you know, you're, you're pretty famous, right? Because, and the Mona Lisa, you know, is now the, it's the term you can use to mean the most famous thing in any field, right? Like something is the Mona Lisa of whatever, you know, it's something that is, uh, you know, beautiful and artful and, and you know, incredibly creative. Um, yeah, so this is this is an old one, but it's um this is a this is an attempt at the time to explain like basically there's this one guy who led to Armstrong's downfall. It's just a again, it's just this weird narrative thing. Um, we don't need to see the one. This is uh you know it's it, this is hard work to do. Um, you know why did uh, Eastern Europe fall when it did? Right, because people, from what I understand, you know, the people who would study, you know, studying all of this and, and thinking about it, didn't really expect any of this to happen. You know, eventually maybe, but not. Or you know, and then some, of course, like it would never fall. Like it's all, it's going to be, grow, be stronger and stronger forever. You know, there's a whole range of ideas of what people thought was possible. I mean, this is just another separate thing. But I remember years ago seeing this guy talk about. Um, what people had predicted about the carrying capacity for the Earth, if you go back over time, what what's the total number? And the, that range is orders of magnitude. You know, like a trillion people to like you know twenty million or something. I, I was married to the uh, dust, dust officer at the State Department for East Germany at the time of Walter. Mm. He predicted it two weeks out. He got in trouble at work because they thought this was a ridiculous prediction. There you go. Right. So usually, yeah, I mean, and it was two weeks before. So that's, 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 that is an enormous, actually really enormous time in some ways, right? Because if you, if you need to get out of the way of something, then it's good to know. But uh, it did. Yeah. I mean, and this is, this is sort of a work to try and understand that, that, um, that collapse. Um, you know, Harry Potter, right? So I think it's 12, 12 or 13 uh, publishing houses said no, right? And the 14th one was just because the, the head of it gave it to his granddaughter, who I don't know who that person is, but they obviously should be thought of this. <laughs> this you know, they, they must be the greatest tastemaker ever, right? But they liked the story and said, you should do it, grandpa. And, and so they you know, they publish it. But how do you not know, right? How do you, how would you not know? You read this thing. How would you not know that this is like, this was like going to be just this, that people would love it and ridiculously play game, you know, um, whatever it is, Quidditch with each other in, in real life, you know, all this stuff, you know, do online things about which house they're in and blah, 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 blah. They released the reads and they thought it was huge because, like, right. it's like every smile go away. And sort of. It was only popular people who had, like, really stinky jobs. So it was, but also, um, frats, right? Men in yeah. dorms. Yeah, yeah. Right, really, like, they really picked up there as well. So they had to tune the advertising a little bit. <laughs> that was not, no, no, no. Sure. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, the history of humans finding things that, you know, go in some different direction or whatever. And, and presumably, you know, we have a survivor bias problem, right? So there's presumably been all these great inventions that have never been manifested because, you know, it's like, oh, it doesn't really work. Um, all, all the, you know, before the time. Anyway, this is about, you know, the failure of prediction. I know I've talked about it a fair bit, but uh, this is a while. This is Murray Sendak. I don't know if you read this as a kid or someone read it to you, but it's where the wild things are, right? So it's pretty out there. Um, so, you know, this is, this is the interview with this guy. It's a nice book. It's perfectly nice. I can't complain about it. And then he goes on about Herman Melville, right? Which is a bit of a leap. When I died, this is Herman Melville. No one's going to mention Moby Dick because it was true. And no one like, you know, like it was, you know, they're all going to talk about my first book about, you know, this, this is, this is, uh, Murray Sendak channeling Herman Melville. I want to say this is probably not how he would have spoken. He was right, right? They did, took him, you know, everyone wanted, you know, beach book. Um, it's 30 or 40, it's a while. And I can't remember how long, but it's many, many decades. People hated it. Um, anyway, so there you go. It took a long time. Um, he named his dog Herman. He was really into it. 
this is a there's a great Colbert interview with him um, a long time ago when Colbert was Colbert. Uh, I think Colbert wrote a book, I Am a Flag and So Can You, or something like that. Maybe. Anyway, it was about the, the flagpole. Um, pretty humorous uh, interview. Anyway, so just, you know, I mean, Moby Dick, Moby Dick is its own thing, you know, like again, something that is used outside of its field to represent whatever. I think Colbert had an idea that uh, was that Moby Dick is a metaphor for the suffering of reading Moby Dick. So, you know. Drafting, right? So this is uh, NFL, you know. So Peyton Manning, you know, became sort of a great player, and, he, and they, they they saw this, right? First overall in '98. Um, Brady famously was close to 200, and um, these are marked here are the ones that went on to be, you know, like I think uh, Pro Bowl, you know, play, you know, sort of. Out, all-star kind of level or whatever it is in, in the NFL, um, which in terms of stories, great stories, produces great stories. I mean, the game itself, not the terrible other things that happen, but the actual mechanics of the game. Not test cricket, but but very good. Um, so, you know, these are, these are, you know, these are the players that were, were, were missed, right? I mean, there's all these people picked in front of them and they, you know, so it's not bad, right? There's a lot of, a lot of good players up here. Um, but this is the this is the same with publishing, right? I think you can easily discount, you know, the stuff, you know, maybe the bottom eighty percent or whatever it is. But then it gets into a big mess here. And and sports, of course, you're tested. Oh, I mean, this is an arena where you're tested over and over and over again, right? So there's, it's it's not like you can, you know, maybe get into get tenure somewhere and then fake it for the rest of your life, which which you know, I have observed. But you know. It, you know, you really, or, you know, get into your little niche where no one knows what you're talking about anymore. It's a very clever, it's a good game. It's good. It's very clever. Yeah. Um, so, you know, these, these are people who are being tested, tested, and tested. So even, even with that, um, it's, it's still hard to predict. Uh, of course, Moneyball was built around this. This is, you know, got itself a movie out of it, but probably I don't think any World Series titles for the, Money ball, it's good. Yeah. Um, oh well, I mean, and it's gigantic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no that. That's a huge, huge endeavor. Yeah. Well, and 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 you 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 keep tipping into new places of measurement, which is the, you know, like baseball now. You have like where the play where the fielders are, right? Which was a zero going back in time. You know, in basketball, you have where everyone is, you know. And even soccer, which has been really difficult to instrument, now you've kind of got a sense of where everyone is. Yeah. They have the things now for soccer that you can, like, you put on their shoes. So you can measure the... Like, that? Measure, like, it's, like, this little tiny tracker that, like, they can, like, put on their shoes. It's kind of like they can be like, put something on, like, not these, like, vests that they kind of... Yeah, which is a bit much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, soccer has been really good because it is a, you know, it's a, it is a bit of a big group game. Right? There's sort of pressure and, and it's, a, you know, it's right. Um, baseball's all these discrete events, saver metrics, right? That's sort of like, it's like, boom, boom, boom. We can count up all these things and maybe get an idea of it. But even there, there's still better data all the time. You can like see it in basketball too, where like the whole game like changed, but there's all this new time, like data scientists were like, yeah. So James Harden either dunks it or tries to shoot three, cheating, but tries to shoot a three, you know, with this. I mean, they just completely transformed that, right? Just hollowed out that, yeah. 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 Yeah.
The problem is we just don't know which half it is, right? Like, it's not, it's a difficult game. It's hard to measure, like, did your ad really reach these people? Um, and the problem with it is that, you know, really when something takes off, like Harry Potter, right, takes off, it is a social, it's in the social wild. You know, you can't control it at some point. Of course, you build theme parks and you make the movies and you have all the stuff and websites and things like you, you, you kind of can develop, uh, you know, in incredibly rich ways. But the fact that people um, just like doing it themselves you know spread it with each other is you know that's the gold that they want so so what that comes back is to is actually make things that people want to show each other like give each other right actually and it works for QAnon as well right like you know i mean it just it 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 works in a lot of ways but that's that's the stuff you want for good and bad to be spreading out uh to you know to make your spreading to really go into the social world and it's too easy to think about Adds just the, the hypodermic thing, right? Just boom, you know, make someone buy something. So, you know, Google, email, this is sort of the early stuff where they just see what you're communicating with each other. So now they actually got your connections between people. Now we're actually like sitting in, not just the nodes. We don't just know about you. We know about the communications you make with people. That's incredible, right? I mean, this is a, you're basically, you know, being able to listen, sit, on, sit on the eavesdrop or you know sit on the phone line but it's in text incredibly rich thing to play around with there are links to things you know uh buzz agent which you probably never heard of but this is something that started this is before uh really before the social media stuff took off and it was amazing to see this and and this is in the time i was working at columbia on social contagion or you know our first stuff that we did i suppose done for years but Buzz agent. So this whole thing was you would sign up for this and you get stuff in the mail, physical mail, and then with little talking points. And the idea was, you know, you go to a party with your friends. It could be like meats for a barbecue or, you know, perfumes or whatever. And you'd have your little talking points and you'd right, but you wouldn't say where you got it from, right? You wouldn't say, that was the whole game. So it was very clever and people actually like doing it they didn't actually they, there was a system for getting points people didn't claim their points so they couldn't figure it out it turned out that people just liked doing it they liked having stuff before their friends did and being able to kind of talk about it and and amazingly to me a friend of my wife turned up one day and had something and i don't know why i just thought it was weird and i said where did you and she she was actually doing this she was doing this bus agent thing i kind of got all you know it became a huge story at the time because this is really nasty you know you're making your friends you know that you can't tell you know right who's on the you know who's acting in a good way anymore now we're messing with social connections but it was super clever of course and um and then they changed it so that you you know they wanted you to say where you got it from like to be a little more upfront. i don't think it harmed it too much uh beacon so facebook right if you go back in time this is sort of the first effort i remember when I started to teach Pucks and kind of put all the social contagion stuff in there, I remember when this happened and I kind of highlighted it straight away because it was the idea of this was if you bought something, Facebook would tell everyone else about it, right? They would go, Boop, you know, you just bought a car or, you know, like um, some, you know, I was going to say lollies or some candy, anything, right? Like a pair of socks, you know? So that's what they, and they, they were, I mean, of course they have succeeded tremendously, you know, since then, but this was a, it got shut down after a couple of days. There was a huge uproar. There was a huge uproar when the timeline went away from just being a timeline to being, you know, this curated, algorithmically curated newsfeed, right? So that, and, and many of you, young, but it, when, when that was introduced, people were incredibly upset. And then there was a little thing where you could kind of toggle back and forth. And then slowly it just sort of went away. And now it's just a newsfeed. I mean, are you 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 remember this transition or? I remember. Yeah, I, and you know, it took a few years, but now I don't think anyone. It never crosses anyone's mind. It's just when there. Facebook first came out, you, only had, you had to have an EDU email address in order to sign right. up. You couldn't just right. Like, right. Everyone was upset when it went to like high schools. Now we're letting the riffraff in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and there's and I have it somewhere else, but there's a a sequencing of the relaxation of what's public and private, right? It went from 
everything being by default private to like no you know oh your your images and so you had to like you had to shut it back down right because they wanted to push so in some ways i think that there, there was a time where they were worried about twitter dominating because twitter is by default open and that's really what they wanted more of but i don't know if that's really true in the end because you know having people more privately communicate with each other and you being able to watch that on top pretty good anyway so this was probably the first big thing it got a huge amount of news and was immediately basically immediately shut down and then of course all of the advertising attempts uh which has led to and i have it on another slide somewhere um do i have it no i don't think i have it so um uh just a, over 20 years a sequence of zuckerberg saying i'm we're sorry we didn't we we, <laughs> we didn't think this would happen we're you know like we'll do better. It's an amazing sequence, starting from that first one that he had at Facebook, which was, um, oh, sorry, at Harvard, which was a hot or not thing, right? It was just where you could rate people on their looks, which was just terrific. Um, what a, what a, what's terrific, yeah. Uh, I guess, uh, all right, I won't say it. All right, so this is Charles Dean. I mean, I think this, this is a book that I, I enjoyed reading. It's an interesting scientific, um, you know, he's a social psychologist, it's an interesting kind of mo uh, mixture of popularly written, but it's fully, you know, full, full of citations. Uh, but this, this framing from um, Cialdini, who I think worked with, you know, Obama's team in 2000, you know, for 2008 and 2012 on, on how, you know, how to do the influence thing. Um, reciprocation, and he has these examples, which have become more and more dated, I suppose. But you know, this these are this this is this taxonomy of, and you know, maybe right or wrong, right? But this is just I'll give you some sense of things. So, um, if someone does something good for you, you want to give back. I mean, tip for tat, right? And also, if they do something bad, you might be basically, you know, eye for an eye kind of thing. So, um, just people acting kindly towards you can in general for people in general right there are there are people who for, for none of none of these influence mechanisms will ever work there are for whatever reason you know um just that people like to do the same thing over and over again right so once you get them practicing in in some way then they tend to keep doing so hazing you know is, is a little bit in, in that category um but just getting a routine, I mean, this is, of course, a good thing as well, right? But we can get stuck. Uh, social proof, this is a complicated one, but this is the one we'll kind of look at most, which is, and it alluded to there, it's just, you know, if everyone else is doing it, it must be okay, right? Like, I should do it. And the reasons for that can be, you know, internally in your mind can be, well, everyone else is doing it, so the safe thing is just to go with the crowd. Um, you can't. Or, or you can't, you know, you can't test everything. So if people are wearing these shoes, these types of shoes, they must be good because people, you know, wouldn't, not everyone would do it. You know, like Harry Potter must be a good book. Can't be something that's just filled with plot devices. You know, surely not. Um, you know, so, you know, you, 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 you can't, so you, so you have to go on the word, word of mouth to some extent. Um, there are a couple other reasons. There. Uh, this is the murder of Kitty Genovese. This is a terrible thing. But th this story, the story that came out of that is that all these people saw this event happen, this murder happen in plain sight and didn't do anything. It's now kind of quite contested, actually, like as to what really happened. So um, that people did react. And yell. so it's, it's more complicated. But it, it led to this simplified story that cities are terrible places. And only the good people live in the country. Yeah. Which is where I'm from, and I'm not sure if that's really true. So, um, you know, just liking uh, Abed and community, I like liking things. Um, you know, just uh, you know, having some you know similarities about people uh, just works is incredibly strong. You know, just putting one kind of hat on one group and another hat on the others, and then authority. And this is uh, you know a classic thing. This is media, um, Milgram's obedience to authority. I know it's in the small world thing, but that's the terrible experiment that, um, that does seem to hold up because the French redid it as a reality TV experiment about 10, 12 years ago. I think it was done in Poland as well. Um, and then scarcity is the last one here, which is just like, there's not much of it that tends, you know, that, that can 
get people excited about the thing, right? So um, there are numbers of examples of prohibition. Obviously, getting drunk is also fun and so on, and you know it's also sugar. But you know there are, there are some intrinsic aspects to it, um, perhaps. Uh, but but the idea of scarcity, right? Okay. If so, the, oh, if the whole world were like you guys, we wouldn't have so many problems. Mm, that's not going to happen. We're one in a million. I know. Nobody I know would leave their jobs and friends and families to do manual labor for three months. Well, you know what? Everybody thinks that I am crazy, and that tells me that I am the sanest person I know. So. <laughs> so not everyone, you know, uses these things. So these are, these are, I mean, the argument is that these are heuristics that sort of come somewhat built in for people, right? I mean, you can't, we're not assessing everything. We have to get by, make some quick decisions about stuff and like work deeply on this thing over here or whatever it is. Um, but of course they can be leveraged, you know, and so, so that's, so, so as soon as you start to do that, um, as soon as you start to, to kind of harvest these built-in tendencies we have, like play with them and mess with them, then they degrades them, right? So you, our, our willingness to do what everyone else does perhaps kind of gets pushed down a little bit because you start to lose trust. I mean, I guess the framing that I'd say about something like Facebook is that it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, harvesting from a social network, but which is built on trust, but it's, but, you know, it, it does help build up trust between community within communities. It's true, but it's also, you know, abrading it, you know, it's like mining it out. Um, I don't know. Maybe it will, maybe it will all be the greatest thing ever, you know, but we're going through a bit of a rough patch with it, I think, where it's, where it's easy if you're a bad actor, essentially, to play with it. Um, it's, a, it's also it's like very hard to get data out of Facebook, right? Like, so you, you can have a relationship with them, you have to physically kind of go there and, and get data and maybe make some graphs and leave. But if you're trying to advertise on it, there's just a giant portal for you to just sort of go and just like harvest things and mess around with them, find out who to you know, who, who are you going to send your messages to? Like that side of it is just gigantic. Anyway, there've been some efforts to get data sets out of it. We've like, you know, more proactive kinds of things with different groups, but, um, and we've had some access to it, but it's not, it's not great. All right. So these are just some other kinds of influence things. All right. Okay. So, um, we talked about this early on, but it's uh, Schelling's tipping model, which was about segregation. So it's about this terrible thing. And it was a simulation on checkerboards, right? With different kinds of coins. And it has the idea of thresholds built in, right? So we've looked at this, this visualization. Uh, yeah, we don't need the network grow one. So Granovetta comes along and is famous for a number of things. Um, Mark Ranova is famous for um, this idea of weak ties being important to people so that uh, if you're, and he did it around job seeking, right? So if you're trying to find a new job, it's useful to look to your weak ties to try and move further out into your social network. This is what we found in the small world experiment as well. Like people who are successful at kind of navigating this big social space they live in are the ones that can kind of skip a little further and, and move around a little quicker. So um, anyway, that's one big thing for him. But he also had this in the, in the 70s as well. Threshold models was basically taking this, what is actually a much more, more difficult thing to study. This, this, you know, you can simulate it, but in fact, the analytic stuff for this is pretty hard, which is fine. That's fine. Um, but, you know, again, still sort of early with computation. Um, Herding models, this is something that sits in economics, and the idea of that is that people, um, even if they're doing the best statistical inference of what's the right thing to do, can mess up just because of little accidents. Um, so that's framed as social learning and informational cascades. But thresholds are just this. So this is the step away from uh, these independent infection models, which is what we have in you know, these elementary disease models. It's like someone sneezes on you, there's some probability you get infected or not. And then it's sort of forgotten. But obviously with 
social phenomena, we hear about something, we hear about it from that person, we hear about it from the, you know, the, a show, we see it here. You know, those things add up, we have memory. Um, you, you know, so it's a different, it's a, it's a very different thing. Um, so the idea is like, well, let's just sort of start to make models where, you know, based on a certain fraction of others having done something, we will adopt that behavior. So it's just about adopting one behavior. Uh, so it could be everyone in our population, it could be the network, right? It could be your close friends, some combination of that. You know, we do potentially avail ourselves to just such distant knowledge these days with the web, right? Like you want to see something about a product, you go and find reviews about it. You have to figure out if those reviews are true or not. Like if it's all, you know, spam, you know, so we're sort of always trying to navigate the space, I think. Um, and, you know, you can have a response that's maybe, depending, this is just modeling stuff, right? So it could be like you just automatically switch on when two thirds of people do something. Um, you could have, of course, you're going to have some variation in thresholds so that some people are easy to flip. Some people are very, you know, resilient for this particular thing that's spreading. Um, right. So, you know, not everyone will get a TikTok, you know, like, so, so your friends are on TikTok. So then you're like, okay, I'll give them a TikTok or whatever. Right. Or, um, you know, it's sort of, it's, it's impressive to see these large scale things still take off, you know, given the, the power base that you you would imagine something like Instagram or Facebook or whatever to have, but you know they become stale and they become things for the older people. You know, like parents use this and I don't want to touch it. So I think there's always just because of time and you have new people coming through. There's always this chance to build something that takes off. Um, you know, the assumptions in some of these models is that the order of other people adopting something doesn't matter. You're just sort of taking a census. You know, this sort of knowledge. Um, and that, that in these models, uh, the influence of each individual person is, is uniform, right? So if you have three friends, that's like three units of influence if they're adopting something. So thresholds, you know, this is the, this is the social proof dimension of um, Cialdini's uh, six pieces. You know, so you could imagine there's an evolutionary kind of thing that's gone on that biologists probably hate, but basically, you know, conforming, like you just want to do something like the person next to you. And I mean, humans are really, we just, we're just imitating machines, um, dress the same as each other, talk the same way da, 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 without, you know, thinking about it. And of course, you know, per, you know, like that XKCD thing at the front, we also managed to think we're all special and individuals at the same time. So this is a great power in it. And as I said, lack of information, you know, you can't figure out everything at all. You can't be measuring everything. Economists sort of think you can, but there's no way you're doing that. So, you know, these people seem happy with the thing. I will also use the thing or I will try the thing. Um, and then there's a, economics does seem, a, sort of ter I don't know, the words are not great, but this is not bad, I suppose. Now, network, oh yeah, this is terrible. Network externalities, oh my God. Um, but basically, you know, everyone else is doing it, then there's, there's uh, you know, these two friends are doing this thing like they, you know, if you go back in time, right, they both have telephones and then this other person gets a telephone, this other person, gets, like they're actually all beneficial to you, that everyone else is getting telephones. So, uh, you know, you might not directly be part of it, but it's coming through the system. Right, Facebook. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just the fact that more and more people are using it. So, so there's definitely also a... Uh, kind of a punting on this, right? That people like go with something they think will take over, right? Like, because they would like to be part of the big thing. Um, and then they're sad when their, their stuff disappears. Like Blackberry, right? Was huge for a while. Like everyone on Wall Street had a Blackberry and it was like the thing with a little keyboard on it. And it's, you know, it seemed absolutely dominant, right? And then Steve Jobs gives a, what was it? Like, a web browser, a phone, what's the other thing? Oh, and a music player, right? He has that fam famous talk where he's like in his turtleneck and, and says they're all the same thing, you know? Anyway. Uh, wait, wait, um, Microsoft doesn't have a phone, does it? Does it have a phone? Must have a phone. They had the Zoom, which was their killer answer to the iPod. Oh, they've just bought Nokia. So they have... What's their phone call? 
Oh, they don't make it. Are they did they buy Nokia? Oh, they just they just own Nokia, which just still exists. Google bought Motorola, right? Which I understand was as much as anything about buying patents, because now you have this like army of patents. You know. Well, you have an army of lawyers armed with patents. All right, all right. So Granover's model. So okay, he's a really simple model, um, which gives rise to some rather rich things. So this could be your, you're you're an individual, and um, you know these are the people who are using Zooms, right? And then you have some threshold for Zoom. And you're going to switch. I don't want everyone to say it. it's terrible. Um, but you you will switch to that that uh, behavior uh, once some you know, and this is specific to the thing. Uh, say in this case, you know, three three fifths of people adopt it. You're like, okay, I'll do it too. And you can imagine more complicated things. You know, we've played around with this stuff. Others, of course, have done this too. But you know, it switches off because you don't want to be like everyone else, right? So you could be a hipster. You know. Oh, Fablet, the pH. But it's like this big. Because that's Samsung does that, right? Yeah. 15, really? Okay. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Right, we'll see. You know, I mean, they, 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 they wait for everything you know, everyone else to develop something and then they can potentially build it and, you know, like Bing, which I think hilariously at some point just return Google searches. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, so um, duck, duck, go, very good. Um, so this is the, so everyone sort of runs around, they have one of these little boxes on their head, right? They have a little response function like this or maybe they have a stochastic one, which is like, oh, maybe, you know, like you can add some. Things like that. But the simple one is to have this, and you can vary this threshold. Right. So someone who's here, they're like, sure. Like one of their friends does it, they're like, yes, I will do that as well. And then um, they just need one person to do it. And then you can have the self-starters, right? If, there's, if, the, if this function actually is non-zero here at zero, you can kind of incorporate that as well. That they just like, yay, you know, like I just, they start doing a thing with no social influence. And we'll just have this fee is going to be the fraction of people who are doing something, whatever it is, good or bad. And, um, and there's just susceptibles and infected. That's a simple thing. So, you know, straight away, and this is really ground and stuff. All right, so you have a response function. Then you have a distribution within this. You know, it's just a sea of individuals interacting with each other randomly, no network structure. So this some distribution, it's kind of a normal looking thing. Um, it's centered around a half. So there are very few who are basically known in this population that's super susceptible, and, and there are no grumpy, you know, won't do it if, even if everyone else does it kind of people. And what you can figure out is that um, given some fraction of people that are doing something, then, and do I have it in this? No. Yeah, it's basically just, so you have some, Distribution of for thresholds, and then the probability uh, that so fraction that are on. I know it's sort of a confusing thing. So p of t plus one is going to be um, the the fraction that are exceeded right by now. So. Right, so, so we've got some fraction that are infected right now, and then we want so that is to say, if this is the fraction that are infected right now, then all of the individuals in this part of the distribution are going to be on in the next stage, right? Because they have some their thresholds are sh lower than the fraction that are infected. And so that is just the integral from here to here, which is then the, if you think, of, if you move this around, it's a cumulative function. So this is the cumulative. And we kind of have to put this, just the normal cumulative. I know we've talked a lot about complementary cumulative. So 
what that means is then you can say, okay, then we, that's the, this is an iterative map, right? So this is, sorry, P of T. So it's a map of the interval, um, zero, one. Right, so you take a value and then that'll give you phi of t and that'll give you phi of t plus one. And this is the complementary, I'm sorry, it's the cumulative distribution. And so the way to play with these kinds of things, you say, okay, let's say we started here with this fraction on. For whatever reason, you know, there's, there's been advertising, you know, this is a movie or something, right? So there on, so this is the value of the complementary, of, I keep saying it, cumulative um, distribution here. So what you can do is say, okay, that's the new value. And instead of, and you kind of have to inject it back in here. So the way to do that is to kind of bounce off the, the um, y equals x thing or phi t plus one equals phi t. Then go back to the, comp to the cumulative and then bounce off the thing, bounce off the thing. And it will keep going like this. And if you were up here, it would bounce, 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 bounce like this. So this is a, there's an unstable fixed point here. And then any, any initial condition below 0.5, it goes to zero. Any initial condition above a half, it goes to one. So this is, ends up being a sort of a, a two-state thing, and you would call this a critical mass model. So we're going to have some fraction of the population doing something. Then we're going to turn on social this, this social copying thing, where we're going to switch it on. And if it's less, if, if our fraction on it to start with was less than a half, it goes to zero. And if it's greater than a half, it goes to one. So that's the idea of there's a critical mass. We needed to start with some initial group of people who are switched on. So this is a very simple thing. And um, that's another critical mass model. And the, the reason I'm showing you, so it's a similar kind of thing. So it's a bit different. This is more smushed out. There are now some people who look like they turn on for free. That, well, you need a delta function. But if you do the cumulative for this thing, it's actually this very kind of, it's not far away from the um, diagonal line here. But you still have this effect, right? So it wiggles down here. This will go blah, 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 up like this. And it's because that slope is greater than one here. But what you can start to see here is if this mass moved this way, you started to get more easily switched on people. Like you sort of just push this a little bit. So for whatever reason, you know, people start to be a little more susceptible. Then this could switch here, right? So the, that's really a crucial thing that this would switch here. And then any small seed takes off. So it becomes... What, what happens is it becomes, what, what becomes important is, if you think about small seeds, is what's the derivative of the cumulative function at zero? Is it greater than one or less than one? If it's less than one, then small seeds die out. If it's greater than one, small, right? And so, you know, sometimes we want this, we want small things to take off. Sometimes, you know, we want small good ideas to take off. We want small bad ideas to not take off, right? So you maybe have to game the system a little bit. Like, so in... Germany, I think, for example, you can't, you have to have 5% of the vote or whatever it is to get a seat. You know, you can't, can't bud from, from nothing. So, right. So Nazis, you want Nazis to like the idea of Nazism to, to, to not take off. Like it has, to, there's still a critical mass, right? So if, in, in that system, if, if some critical mass of people are like, you know, like a new party, shall we say, like a far right party, then it could take off or any party. Uh, but the idea is to kind of, Build, build that in. All right, so, and then you have uh, something like this where now you've got a population that's much more uh, divided looking. Now you've got a lot of, say, gullible people or easily convinced people. And then these are the resilient ones, right? And there's not so much in the middle. The cumulative for that looks, has a, instead of you know, going like this, it's now above and then below. And so it's exceeding that slope of one here. So small seeds take off. And in this case, there's, there's still an upper thing because you run into these characters and they can't be convinced, right? You'll never, even, even, if, even if you started with some large fraction on for whatever reason, and then you, then you let the social mechanism run, it will still decay back to here. And the, these, these, these people will always be on board, right? Yeah. Um, but this is something where, you know, we're really worried about this for good reason. I mean, COVID, right? Start, it didn't start from... COVID being, you know, you didn't have a million of the same thing somehow spontaneously appearing in different countries, right? There was a seed for this. It did come from 
well, we don't, but they say a bat or whatever. Like there, there was this one little interaction, right, that, that started to make things spread. So, um, you know, this is the robust yet fragile kind of world, right? We don't, we're, we're worried about these things. And we're worried about it if, so just to go back to this one, like here we're living in this world. It's like, oh, look, nothing takes off, right? People have tried to like set things up so there's a big fraction of people that, that always decays, always decays. But if you just change this distribution a little bit, suddenly, suddenly it's a, a you know, there's a real a massive transition. So that's a good, you know, many examples in physical systems, right? Where everything looks fine, it's all robust, but you just move distributions a little bit and suddenly it's, it's uh, explodes. Suddenly, you have a president that's just like, yeah, you can do whatever you want, and some people will be poached. Well, yeah. I don't know if it's a good example of that. Um, I, I mean, I don't know what the statistics are on things like hate crimes and so on, but you know, there are there are, you'd, you'd have to measure have to measure that. Do people behave differently? I mean. You know, we see a lot of influence from, from, there's a weird thing I would say about sort of movies and stories is that there's a general idea that good ones, like good ones that are uplifting and show you what you could be uh, great, they're representative of, right? And they, and we, 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 I mean, people seem to view them as powerful, right? That they're actually, they are really indicating to people and giving people ways of thinking about where they could go. And it, you know, like Indiana Jones, there were a whole bunch of people became like archaeology as the degree took off after to give a ridiculous example. You know, to give a terrible example is like natural born killers, right? Which the Columbine kids talked about, like MBK. They made an initialism out of it and that became something to copy, right? So, um, so that's the sort of flip side. There are negative things that are portrayed, but that's generally thought to be just entertainment, right? You can't sort of like this sort of, and there's sort of a history of people saying, oh, you know, video games are bad or dark movies are bad. Like they're, they're generally run out of the room. And so I don't really understand why both of those things, I mean, I sort of do understand, but I think it is a bit of a funny thing we run around with. So, yeah, I mean, it's about, you know, do you give, I mean, there's an element of giving permission, but it's also like showing people like, oh, you could do this, you know, like, and I, I mean, to step outside the U.S., I mean, clearly in countries around the world or states around the world, there have been massive transitions, sometimes to brutal, situ you know, awful situations, you know, like Rwanda or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of it, some, you know, some of this is pointing towards the fact that you can have people who are not particularly, right, if you go back to this, like, there are all these people here that, you know, they, they need a fair amount of influence to do something, right? They, 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 Right, there, there are all these. There are some resistant people who would kind of never do it, but in this case, you know, eventually everyone does do it. I mean, they're stylized, very, very kind of abstract models, but it's pointing towards you can have a story where you have lots of people, lots of different, in this case, thresholds, but they can have lots of different, you know, internal kinds of states. But you know, if everything goes one way, they can all be on 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 board with some kind of behavior that. That in isolation they wouldn't have done. And this is, I mean, this is, this is, I've kind of got it there, I suppose, which is, you know, collective uniformity, everyone doing something doesn't mean that you had individual uniformity at all. You can actually have a very diverse underlying population. Um, those small changes that I was talking about, maybe in the population distribution, can lead to massive changes, right? Just, and that's, you know, the, the Granovera theory sort of invoked as not explicit, you know, it's not like here's the actual data and we measured it and we knew what the thresholds were like beforehand. Like we don't have that data. But as sort of a, a general kind of way of, of, of getting people to think about systems and thinking like, you know, the fall of Eastern Europe, for example, um, you know, it, it looks stable, but then there's just a kind of a little shift. You just need a shift of people's beliefs a little bit and then suddenly you can have this amplification and people, you know, like the sort of the early adopter people are here and then others can join in and join and join in. And that's, 
that's the kind of thing that was seen there with people gathering in spaces and um, forming larger and larger groups, which could have been, you know, prevented, right? I mean, authoritarian states do prevent that, right? And, and I didn't, you guys are very young, but, you know, after 9-11, um, you know, all these things happened, but there was, you know, on planes, there were no, um, you know, you couldn't gather in groups of two or more, right? Like, and this is the sort of thing that authoritarian, very, very reasonably from their point of view, no gatherings, right? This is a sort of standard, standard, you know, big bad kind of thing to, to, to make sure that people aren't, you know, acting together, coordinating. Because quite rightly, they're worried about small seeds um, taking over because they are bad. <laughs> um, anyway, so anyway, this is this is the this is this massive problem we have, right? So the, what actually happens in complexes is really difficult for us to uh, understand um, as individuals. Like the stories we like to, you know, I, I say this broadly. People like to tell it. Usually, more about individuals. Um, even when there's a collective involved, there's still traces through an individual story. I think that's true across a lot of cultures. It's still try to tie it to an individual actor in some way. Or even if you know it's a big collective disaster, it's like just we want to trace through what an individual might experience. And if you're yeah, linear algebra, right? So so these system stories just we we don't really they, they're hard hard for us to to see. I mean, you know, movies with a it, that's tough. I mean, this this foundation thing, which I don't know if anyone's tried to watch that, but Apple, right? I, I mean, it was a pretty brave thing. To, it's never really worked out, but apparently it's not good. But, you know, Asimov, this is like a, whatever it is, 10,000 year evolution of a, of a galaxy. And of course, they're going to have to tell stories around individuals because, yeah. uh, you know, and obviously Asimov too, right? Anyway. Individual stories, you know, we really can't help ourselves with that. So uh, the next piece I'll talk about, and I obviously I've run out of time, but I'm, I'm going to um, talk about this. is going to be uh, my colleague Watts. And then had a foundational paper in PNAS was back in 2002. And um, I talked with him a lot before before he got this paper together. And then and then we worked together and um, did a lot more stuff around it. But this is a – the transition is to go from this mean field model where – you know, the, the ground of it, I think, you could see collectively what everyone else is doing. So you imagine, like, you're getting this feed to you from the media kind of perhaps, like, 53% think this, 54% think this. And so that's how you basically behave. Or maybe you're just like you, you know, it's something you can kind of see in the population around you. So it's not quite mean field, but it's close. Um, uh, or, you know, it's an averaging of everything. And then move it to a network model. So now you can only see some small subset around you. And that changes things drastically again. And then, of course, how what kind of networks you have changes things and changes things and changes things. And the last piece I want to put in here, I suppose, is about groups, right? So groups, so incredibly important. When you put groups in, you can really get uh, amazingly terrifying behavior. Okay, um, I know we've run out of time but uh let's keep going all right just a few more weeks the answer is in the box